So stealing is bad, but in a P2P network, it is a cakewalk. In this seventh video of the BitTorrent internal series, we take a detailed look into various challenges that comes with a P2P network and dive deep into the engineering hacks that could help us download our torrent faster. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Greek buzzes live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. Thanks. So every P2P network suffers from free riders. Free riders are the peers in the P2P network that are downloading a lot but never uploading anything back to the network. This has two side effects. First is that it affects the genuine users in the P2P network because they like they are under a pressure because they would not get the download speed that they deserve because free riders are eating up everything. And second is having a lot of free riders threatens the existence of the system because they would put a lot of load on seeders and on other leechers and they would leave the network or they crash off, right? So this is what the problem is when you have a lot of free riders and this is a big problem in any P2P network, right? Things would have been very easy if there was a central authority who was distributing the data. In BitTorrent, we know that there is a tracker who keeps track of stuff, but it still does not do the actual data distribution, right? So there is no track. So the peers talk to themselves or talk among themselves and then get the data and distribute the file. So it's hard to prevent abuse, but central authority who is also responsible of distributing the data could have solved that. Right. So before we jump into exploiting part of things on the engineering side, uh, let's talk about or let's have a very quick overview of BitTorrent. Right. Uh, this is the seventh video in the series. Uh, in the past six videos, we went into in depth of a lot of this stuff. So I would, if you have never, if you have not, if you have not checked those videos out, I would highly recommend you to do it because a lot of context might be required for this, right? But still, I've tried to keep it very uh, simple to understand. And even if you start from here, it's good. But highly recommend you to check out the first six videos of this particular series. Okay, so quick overview: a BitTorrent uh, network has seeders. Seeders are the nodes that have the entire file. Then we have leechers. Leechers are the nodes that are currently downloading the file and but it's not that leechers would not see the content. They would see the content. They would share the pieces that they have but they still don't have the complete file. So leechers, they talk to seeders and other leechers to complete their download faster. Right? And because it's a P2P network and there is no central authority, every so a BitTorrent network just suggest a guidelines on how peers should behave but it but it cannot enforce anything because there is no central authority the peers are talking to themselves so there is nothing central as such 
So the guidelines are there, but a peer can choose to not follow it, which is what leads to exploitations, right? So let's start talking about them. First one is you always pretend to be a new peer. So what we know of is that when you join a network, right? So you can say that, hey, I don't have any file. Please give me a list of all the peers that I can talk to, right? So this is what your announce phase looks like, right? So when you join a network, you announce yourself, ki, hey, I'm here. I don't have anything. I am a new peer. Give me the list of peers who I can download my data from. Right. And this is where you talk to tracker to get it. So now what would happen is uh, now when you are joining a network and you're claiming yourself to be the new peer, new peer as in you do not have any pieces to share. So although morally you should be sharing the pieces that you have, but here it's, you. it's your response. It's up to you to not do it, right? So what you, very uh, you as a peer who is trying to exploit it, you can tell to the tracker, I don't have any piece. And tracker would have to believe it because it's a P2P. Tracker does not know how much, pe how many pieces do you have. But you can always say to the tracker, hey, I don't have any piece, give me the list of 50 peers. Now this way, you, because you are not announcing yourself to anyone that, hey, I have this piece, for all of them, you are a new peer always. So no one will reach out to you to get any piece for them. So it would save your upload bandwidth and you can continue to download as fast as you can, right? First exploitation. Then when a peer starts, it announces itself to tracker and tracker sends it a list of peers that it can talk to. So when you join the network, you would get a list of peers to talk to, right? Now, every time you make an API call to the tracker, tracker would give you a list of peers to talk to. Do this very aggressively. Do this extremely aggressively. And although BitTorrent protocol says that you can have at least 50 in your active peer set and whatnot, don't follow that. Have 200, 500, 1000, 20,000 nodes. Gather as many peers in the network as possible by aggressively making call to tracker and getting the peer list. This way, you would have, you would have accumulated a large number of peer addresses whom you can reach out to and get your data from, right? And this is when you have a large number, a large number of peers to talk to and you show them interested, you are maximizing your chances of downloading the piece that you need because you have addresses, because that's the biggest problem. You need addresses of the peers in the network because that's what you don't have, right? A entire BitTorrent network might have, let's say 50,000 nodes. But you, when you make a call to tracker, you are only getting 50. So if you aggressively make call to your BitTorrent network, or if you make aggressively calls to tracker, you can accumulate 1000, 2000, 5000 of them. And when you have that much, you, you can talk to anyone to get the data from. You are not restricted to just 50 or 20 or 40. And so be aggressive in making requests to the, uh, tracker and gather as much of IP addresses as possible so that you know that, hey, these are all existed in the network to with through whom you can get it, right? Second exploitation strategy is be greedy with piece selection. So peers are supposed in, uh, in a couple of videos back when we talk about piece selection algorithm, we saw that how BitTorrent nodes or the peers participating in the torrent, they prioritize downloading of rarest piece first. So with this, what it uh, empowers is that even if a seeder leaves the network, there is still all the piece still float in the network. So the piece that is the rarest is downloaded first so that someone in the network at least has it, right? But now what you can do is, although it's recommended, you can go greedy with it. You can say, hey, give me every piece that I want. Right? So whenever you are getting unchoked from a peer, you proceed with whatever piece you have, give it to me. Right? So instead of going with rarest first, you are trying to download as many pieces or what all pieces that you could get. Instead of just finding, I'm just looking for the rarest piece. No, grab whatever piece you get from the peer and download it on you. 
right and once you download it you would you would basically download your files much faster so be greedy be greedy with your piece selection strategy and don't follow redest fast and then open a large number of connection request a large number of connection request like we know that we like we heard we have we all have heard that if you open large number of tcp connections then your performance would go down it's not that true and a computer has a very large limit of the concurrent tcp connection you don't need to worry so open as many tcp connections to as many remote peers as possible and show them you are interested in downloading a piece so now what would happen bittorrent uh, a good a good uh, bittorrent node would uh, uh, implement chokes algorithm which means that you have to give something for you uh, like you have to give something to that node so that it allows you to download right it's a reciprocation it's it's based on reciprocation right but what bittorrent or uh, what choke the actual choke algorithm does is that out of four nodes three are picked from the one who are interested in all but one is an optimistic unchoke Opt what does optimistic unchoke means that although it promotes that hey three nodes i'll unchoke of the people who have given me something but one i will do it at random this way what happens is although you the node like you have shown your interest in downloading a particular piece from a particular peer even if you have not uploaded there is still a chance a one in four chance that it would unchoke you so that you can download <coughs> right and this is optimistic unchoke to solve problem of bootstrapping and all but you can use it to exploit a lot of stuff here and so because once a while the once a while is in once every 30 seconds it would run an optimistic unchoke as soon as the optimistic unchoke happens you would get the piece that you want from the peer that you are asking it from without any reciprocation so now by connecting to a lot of peers you are increasing your chances to get optimistically unchoked because every peer uh, every few seconds it would optimistically unchoke some of the peers that are interested in it so if you are connected to a lot because all although the protocol says you connect to 50 don't do that connect to 5000 5000 people at one go you are increasing your chances to get optimistically answered because it is pure random selection given that it is pure random selection you are increasing your chances to be optimistically and choked giving you a good download speed right you don't need to upload anything but because it's a random selection you would get it so the download speed is proportional to the number of peers we connect to and it's a and it's a linear relation it's a linear relation so more the peers you connect to faster your download speed would be without having to do anything right you don't have to upload anything back and that's a good part of it right so one key thing to note is it might be possible that if a node creates two connections to the same remote peer the remote peer might chop you off possible depends on the implementation but you can still give it a shot and it might also it might uh, uh, penalize you you don't know so don't risk it that if you are connecting to one node uh, so basically if you are connecting to one node don't create multiple connections to the same node right not not helpful right and choke algorithm has a latest version called bit level uh, basically bit table tit for tat that addresses this problem but it still if a torrent is working on an old version of chokes algorithm it would have this vulnerability right okay the final exploitation that i want to talk about is pretending to upload right so here who said that you like although you know you would get a better download speed if you upload much more right because they would think you are a good you are a good node in the system but how would they know that you have uploaded much for this you have to tell tracker that hey i have downloaded this much and i have uploaded this much here what happens is there is no way for tracker to know that how much you have uploaded the number that you send tracker would believe it so now what you can do is you send a bloated false number to tracker ki hey i uploaded this much and i downloaded this much so have to do send bloated number if you send bloated number what would happen your tracker would think that you as a stealer he doesn't know you are a stealer you as a stealer are a very good citizen and you are uploading more than you are downloading 
so it would give you a boost by sharing you as a peer in others announcement because anytime a new node joins in tracker selects 50 nodes at random and sends the address you want your probability of getting chosen in that much higher and how do you do it by pretending to be a good citizen and that's what happens here right so you pretended to be a good citizen by bloating up the numbers and because you bloated up the numbers now what happened is the tracker is proactively is proactively choosing you over others to send it out during the initial announcement so now you are getting connected to a lot more peers and accelerating your download second way to pretending of download is upload dummy data <laughs> so although you are not saving on your upload bandwidth but you are still not sharing the actual piece so you are being a little mischievous in this where instead of uploading the actual piece you are choosing to upload some random dummy data right but what would happen is some bit on like it's it's not good because when you are uploading something and the other remote node might do a md5 verification if it does and it finds that md5 doesn't match so what you would get is you can say hey i uploaded this much something might have gone bad in the network because of which your packet changed right so in most cases it should not have any problem but but if this happens repeatedly the remote peer might kick you out of the network implementation again is a p2p there is no central authority of implementing it algorithm is distributed so it's up to the peer on how it reacts when it knows that you send stupid data <laughs> right when you send dummy data instead of the actual one so you might still get a boost in download for some time given that you have actually physically uploaded stuff but there is no guarantee to that and these are some very nice simple ways to uh, challenge or uh, to make life bad for uh, uh, or, or to, to make it very challenging for a P2P network and that that happens so every and specifically P2P networks they all suffer from this problem they all so there they have to be very smart in finding out that free riders are not exploiting them enough and these were the few very simple exploitations on BitTorrent uh, on how you can do it BitTorrent and obviously the proposed algorithms also change with the specification the packages update the trackers update and whatnot some of them might not be available but some other vulnerabilities might come out right and yeah that's it that's it from me on exploiting the BitTorrent part we took it we look at it from the engineering side of things on how you can do it because it would be your code who is trying to fetch it from the torrent and download the content so it's up to you your implementation on how you are doing it right there is no central authority to look at it so i would highly encourage you to write your own BitTorrent downloader and see and try to exploit it it's fun it's fun it's unethical a little unethical but it's fun to do it right so yeah that's it from me for this video uh if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub this was the seventh video in the BitTorrent internal series and i'll see you in the next one thanks again.